Okay, I got a lot for you. So let's start with the game last night. Now, New England on offense, they couldn't do nothing. Matt Jones is frustrated. He on the sideline mumbling and yelling stuff. He wants to see more out of the offense. He wants Bill Belichick to maybe take some responsibility and accountability that the offense, we just suck on offense. We got to be more than just like a running team. But let's be real. New England's not going to do much. They're not going to do much. They're 6-6. Six and six. They play real good defense. They don't turn it over. They play smart football. They're not no real contender. Buffalo got their number. It ain't really going as planned. Matt Jones believes they should be throwing the ball more. Now, look, you got Matt Patricia and you have Joe Judge really pretty much running the offense. Joe Judge was no kind of coach for the Giants. He was no kind of head coach. Matt Patricia is a defensive guy. So there's issues going on in New England, and Matt Jones got to kind of keep himself composed. But I know what he's going through when you're going to run sweep right, off tackle left, off tackle right. New England's a crazy place because you got capable wide receivers. You got Devontae Parker. He's a pretty good receiver, but he's not involved in the game plan. You go to New England as a receiver and you end up becoming not that good. Becoming trash. Bill Belichick's not much of an offensive guy. Tom Brady made that whole thing work. He made the whole thing work. He covered up everything. Flaws, especially on the offense. But the fact that New England's what, six and six? It was amazing. Uh, I'm all over the place, y'all. Now, Kanye West, please do not bring Chris Paul into your madness. CP3 is not thinking about Kim Kardashian. There's nothing there. Chris Paul is handling his business, helping out HBCUs, trying to get back to the NBA Finals. You think he wants to respond to questions about how he how he living if and if he's dealing with Kim Kardashian, come on, man. Like, take your lunacy somewhere else. Like, not not Chris Paul. He, he ain't doing that. Not with your ex-wife anyway. By the way, both parties is like, nah, come on. This joker, he on one. He bugging. He bugging. Uh, I told you I was jumping all over the place now. They're talking about FCS attendance. We all know... Black college football leads the way when it comes to uh, FCS attendance. Jackson Dental is averaging like, what, 40,000 fans a game? Here's their numbers right here, up above. Because it's not 40,000, it's a little bit more than 36,000 on average for 11 games, which is pretty good. And their home game averaging about 43,000 fans at their home games which is great. And again, tomorrow they're gonna to get at least 50,000 people for the SWAT championship. Now, Stephen A. Smith, a big supporter of HBCU schools, went to Winston-Salem State, doing a great job as far as what ESPN calls a great job. He got the number one, I think, talk, TV talk, sports show on. But he says something that got people upset. He said that he's fond of Jerry Jones, and I'm like, I don't understand how you find a Jerry Jones. Like, he hasn't hired a black head coach. He don't got that many blacks in the front office. He was against Ka Colin Kaepernick's kneeling. Said he'll fire anybody who doesn't stand up and salute the flag. Now, that's what Jerry Jones said. But to each his own. If he's fond of him, so what? That's his thing. I just don't get it. I'm fond of my father. Rest in peace. I'm fond of my mother. About a football team's owner who displays his hand all the time. Well, maybe it's business related, but to each his own. That's just Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith says he fights for the culture all the time and the community. He does a lot of good things. He just, that kind of just threw me off. And somebody tell me what's going on with Antonio Brown. I mean, he was evading the cops. They got some kind of arrest warrant out for him. 
Then I heard it was some kind of standoff with police. I'm starting to believe that football did more harm than good to him. Because he doesn't act like he has any kind of sense. I hope it works out for Antonio Brown. I really do. I hope he, hope he be okay. Yeah, it's getting boring. <laughs> I mean, what else? Let's see something different. Do something, maybe do it with his left hand. I'm just joking. How do you describe what Luca was able to do out there on the What's good, y'all? What's going on? I see that Trent Dilford is going to be the next head coach at UAB. I ain't mad at this. Not at all. Trent Dilford, NFL quarterback, Super Bowl winning quarterback. Even though he was a game manager for the Ravens when they won, he became a talking head for the networks, talking football, and he spent the last four years coaching high school and his team has been very successful. So he paid his dues. He actually earned, he earned the job in college. So when he's officially named coach at UAB, congratulations to him. Now this joker got a wealth of experience. You talking about college, college player, NFL player, talking head on the uh, networks, high school coach, you put in the work. Now he's gonna get rewarded. So congratulations. Kinda anxious to see the details of the contract. See what kind of money he gonna get. Now, I don't think he's going to get no $70 million over eight years because it's his first college coaching job and he's still got to prove himself. But he put him to work at UAB in a couple seasons. Then he'll jump around like a lot of these head coaches because at the end of the day, money talks. But if he can recruit, he'll be successful because that's what most of college football is. 90% of it's recruiting. You gotta land them good players. You gotta get good players. Good players make good coaches, and vice versa.